The words cancer and hope don't always go together for some of us, but for my guest in this edition of SC21 TV, those concepts do fit together. Eric Stahlberg, will you please introduce yourself and let us know how hope and cancer go together in the work you're engaged in? Certainly, and thank you for the opportunity, Rich, to, to talk to SC21 uh, TV. So yes, I'm Eric Stahlberg, and I'm directing biomedical informatics and data science at Frederick National Lab for cancer research. Uh, this is uh, an activity that, that uh, has been part of what I've been doing now for about the past three years as the director. But we, we really got into the high performance computing and cancer aspect uh, simply because there are so many people that are affected by cancer. And high performance computing has so much opportunities to, to make an impact. And you know, part of the passion that I have for it is, is both personal, but also just in general caring about everyone and looking at how HPC with the tremendous changes and scale that we have for Exascale uh, can create hope in the new computational approaches. Uh, and and that, that essentially led to the development of the, the workshop. Talk to us about that workshop. How did it get started? Uh, the workshop itself uh, came about in, in, in 2015. Uh, 2015 was in, in some ways a, a, a watershed year for several initiatives. Early on in 2015, there was the Precision Medicine Initiative. Uh, and later in 2015, uh, there was an HP, uh, the Strategic uh, Computing Initiative. Uh, that came about. And so the workshop is actually uh, came about through discussions with a, one of my co-organizers, Patricia Kovach uh, from uh, Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai as a way to bring the community together and look at what are the challenges and what are the opportunities when we look at computational approaches for cancer. Uh, and so in many ways, it was really uh, a response to the fact that there were many, already many individuals at supercomputing who had talked about using HPC in cancer, as well as individuals who had personally had experiences in knowing family members or other acquaintances that had been impacted by cancer. And really just an opportunity to bring everyone together and say, we know HPC, we know the, the data, we know the technologies, what can we do with high performance computing and those capabilities to really impact cancer? And so that's how we got the workshop started as a way to bring people together and begin to brainstorm about what can we do and how can we begin to move forward. Well, I am glad that you're talking about this and we get a chance to give it a little bit of publicity before the conference because I'm sure there are many people who will find this a very compelling topic. It certainly is for me. Um, my father died of cancer when I was a little boy, but my mom survived cancer. And that was partly due to the fact that it was decades later. Uh, I know time goes by very quickly here in high performance computing, but what's changed since that first conference or that first workshop back in 2015? Uh, well, it, you know, you're right. Time is, is flying and it's, it's almost like time is accelerating exponentially. Uh, but what's really changed since we had the first workshop uh, back in 2015, first of all, when we had the workshop, we didn't know how many people would be interested in attending. And boy, were we were surprised. Uh, we had a lot of people that were interested. Uh, it was an opportunity to really just get groups of people that maybe wouldn't otherwise get together uh, to come together and talk about, I have a solution, I have a problem, and do some of that, that matchmaking uh, in the context of let's find a way to solve cancer together. I think a notable thing in that first workshop was uh, the announcement of a, an impending collaboration between the National Cancer Institute and the Department of Energy. And at that time that had not yet happened. And so it was a, it was a tremendous opportunity to say what can happen when we bring these government agencies together. Since that That's time, another one where, where you might not necessarily think those go hand in hand, but how, do, how did they fit together? Oh, it was, it was actually you know, somewhat fortuitous. And as I've, as I've remarked to people at times, it's just amazing how things begin to fall into place. Um, so at the time, the DOE had been investing heavily in the future of exascale computing. Uh, and I've been tracking that through my career and watching what could, could happen. And as an opportunity, it, it seemed there was so much potential for what we could do with that level of compute 
to impact cancer research. At the time, I was directing a bioinformatics core for the Center of Cancer Research uh, out here in the, in the DC area. And there was a, a, essentially a gap between how HPC was being used and the level of HPC that was available. And so I reached out to some colleagues that I had known for several years and said, if we had an HPC initiative, what could we do? And we started a conversation and they identified that there were uh, individuals in the DOE who were looking at what could we do with biological applications in that next level of computing. And so it turns out that, that we, we got connected, we had a discussion, and then ultimately it was a really uh, opportunistic situation where both agencies were th of the same mind is that we should work together on this and find ways to have an impact helping both the advances in cancer at the same time driving some advances in the high performance computing, particularly in the, uh, in the biological area and in the data intensive computing spaces. And so those, it was just a, a natural fit that you couldn't actually write the script for it. It was just, it just happened in, in a tremendous way. Oh, it's great to hear about that. And speaking of advances, can you give us an idea of what some of the uh, high interest areas, some of the growth areas are? Sure, absolutely. I, I think one of the things that that is really uh, changed since we started the, the workshop back in, in 2015 is the tremendous interest in deep learning and in artificial intelligence. It had always been around, but had never really uh, penetrated at scale uh, in this particular case. And so that's been a transformative aspect is how AI can actually be used to impact cancer research. Uh, just recently, uh, the, the head of the NCI and uh, the head of the NCI Center for Biomedical Informatics and Information uh, Technology just released a paper uh, for the, uh, highlighting several of the key areas for that. There's opportunities in making sure that the data are ready. There's opportunities in education. There's opportunities to look at AI and ethics in that, that aspect. So there's so many opportunities just around AI. And as we begin to look more broadly at how we actually become uh, manifest with those solutions and how we impact the patients, we begin to look at one of those that's really compelling uh, is, a, is a digital twin. When we begin to look at, can we model the, the, the human, the human systems and how those are impacted by cancer and then how they can be treated by cancer. And that leads to whole new areas of looking at how do we develop new drugs? How do we actually uh, look at how we treat more effectively with radiation? How do we actually integrate these different treatment types effectively and move into an area where we have predictive uh, analytics at a level where we actually have trust and confidence in them? So those are some of the really exciting areas is the AI wow, and the computing is, and bringing all those things together. That is such a cool idea. Um, so what I'm what I'm hearing from this is it, it might be possible in the future for me to have a digital doppelganger that has the uh, some of my genes and some of my behaviors and some of my uh, family history uh, encoded, and then then we have a better idea of what will happen to the real me. Is that kind of how that works? That, that's kind of how it's in, envisioned, and I will say that. You know, the idea for this cancer patient digital twin came out of the collaboration with the uh, NCI and the Department of Energy and bringing in that extramural community, that broader investigator uh, community. Back in 2019, we had a, a meeting uh, actually out at Lawrence Livermore National Lab in California and brought people together. And one of the concepts that came out of this was a digital twin or a, in that situation. How do we make one of those as, as one of those challenges that we don't quite know how to do, but if we had one, it could be really impactful. And so that actually has evolved into uh, last year, we had a virtual uh, ideas lab for a week with a number, number of uh, extramural investigators who ultimately are now engaged on some early uh, projects to help frame what are the potential paths forward for this to happen. And we'll be hoping to hear some of the readouts from those activities at the workshop this year. So you're exactly right. It's uh, I have a doppelganger and we can look at potentially how different treatments or different approaches would be expected to 
uh, impact you in a favorable way and find that combination that's going to be best for you in that situation. So exciting. Uh, so any other things that you'd like to highlight that uh, people who are thinking of attending this could expect? Oh, so, oh certainly. Uh, I, what's, what's really nice about this workshop, it's an opportunity to connect. And even though we were, were virtual, we had real good opportunities for, for people to, to connect in the workshop get to know each other. We have interactive panels. Uh, we have uh, wonderful presentations. And we usually have uh, access to resources that you can use as follow-up after the workshop. One of those resources is a, a, an ongoing collaborative site with, that we have for a, envisioning computational innovations for cancer challenges. Uh, it's a website that we use to bring the community together. So they can expect to be, hear more about that. They can expect to hear more about the digital twins. They can expect to hear how computation is being used to accelerate drug discovery. And combining that with the aspect of the digital twin, finding the treatments that are best suited for you in different ways. So there's, there's a whole lot that we're looking forward to in the workshop, as well as learning how to connect and, and build the community that sustains even after the workshop. Well, thanks for being involved uh, over time in this amazing workshop. While we have you here, this is your opportunity uh, to talk about your sponsoring institution and some of the things that you're doing there. If you'd like to do that, now's sure. the time. All right. Uh, so just a little bit about uh, Frederick National Lab. As, uh, as I mentioned early on in the introduction, I'm directing the, the Biomedical Informatics and Data Science Directorate there. That group has a, a lot of responsibilities. One of the portions of, the, of that group that supports the, the researchers that are federally funded and looking at some of the ongoing persistent cancer challenges and looking at those in all aspects. The Advanced Biomedical Computational Sciences Group is the one that's doing that. Another part of the, the directorate is actually responsible for delivering the cancer research data commons. That is one of the fundamental places where new data can be found uh, for those investigators and for the community. So uh, the group is doing that. And then a third part is really the strategic and data science initiatives group that is helping spearhead some of the workshops and the outreach and the capabilities that are out there. So just a little bit about our directorate there, but we're not the lab alone. The lab is a science group. Uh, what's important about the science group is that they work on impacting the challenges in cancer. They look at uh, impacting and responding to uh, emerging health threats, including COVID-19. They develop new technologies for cancer research. They push the frontiers of the cancer research science, and they support the, the infrastructure that's needed to do that. So the laboratory itself really focuses on cancer broadly, developing new treatments and new options, uh, somewhere we have not really yet intersected the computation, but those are just creating opportunities off into the future. So it's the lab itself is really uh, a tremendous national resource as a, as a national lab. And I will say it's the only national lab that's focused on biomedical research. Well, wonderful. I think one of the themes that I'm hearing through all of our discussion here is connection, and collaboration. And I want to thank you for connecting and collaborating with us on this SC21 TV interview. And to our viewers, thanks for watching and join us again soon for another edition of SC21 TV.